Bigger, Better, Stronger, Faster, episode number 17. You're listening to Bigger, Better, Stronger, Faster, where reaching your potential is just getting started. And now, here are your hosts, Johnny B. Truant and Joel Runyon. Hey everyone, and welcome to Bigger, Better, Stronger, Faster, the podcast that's all about uh, what does I say? Building yourself a life that is legendary and doing the impossible. I think I got that backwards. So I'm a little out of practice. Uh, I'm Johnny B. Truant, and my co-host is, of course, Joel Runyon. Say Hello. hi, Joel. I'm Joel Runyon. Nice to see you all again. <laughs> so, jo- so Joel has been um, he's he's been busy with some stuff. So that's why we didn't do a podcast last week. But uh, that is not Joel. In case you're listening on audio, and you recognize my farce. This is actually. Uh, my buddy Roger Lawson, buddy and trainer. And uh, we've talked about Raj. We say that we, we're expecting the check any day now from as much as <laughs> we talk about you on the show. <laughs> so I had been wanting, we'd, we'd both been wanting to have Raj on again. Uh, again. We wanted to have him on anyway. And so I said, why don't we just do like the co-host thing? And you can, per, you can be Joel. You can step into Joel's role and I'll be me. I'll play the role of me. <laughs> I'm going uh, wear my impossible shirt, but... Oh, that would have been that would have been good. Then you really could have pretended to be Joel. I'm thinking an identity theft. See? <laughs> oh man, thanks for having me on. I I, I love the intro. I I wish I sounded like that. Everything I said. You could try it. Um, you could it try worked for like five on. seconds, and Maybe then my, my vocal cords would be shredded. Right. <laughs> Joel likes it too. He's bigger, better, stronger, faster. Um. <laughs> So in the spirit of you being a co-host today, do you want? I actually have a voicemail. You want to play it? Yes. All right. So we'll see if you have some thoughts on this. This is uh, from Jacob about. It's just this time for fitness, but I forget what it says. Why don't we just listen? Hey Johnny, this is uh, Jacob Collin for Bigger, Better, Stronger, Faster. But I do have a question. About two years ago, I did the Insanity Challenge. It's a 60-day challenge, and I dropped about 40 pounds two waist sizes, and it was about the smallest I'd ever been. Two years later, I am bigger than I've ever been. I know you're a writer, too, obviously, and you do a lot of word count. I have a word count goal of myself of 3,000 words a day. I work 10-hour days at my current day job, and what I'm having trouble doing is finding time to really keep up that fitness, and I've kind of put it on the back burner, which is probably not the smartest idea while I've been trying to launch my in the book career, what kind of advice do you have for someone that's trying to put out a lot of count, a lot of word count while working a day job and having a kid and a wife, but still having time to really not be uh, so fat? So <laughs> that's my question. Uh, thanks, you guys, for everything that you do, and keep being cool. So since he addressed that to me, let me go ahead and give my answer first, but then I'm going to toss it to you, Raj. All right, so, cool. Uh, my answer to that is I don't know how helpful this is going to be because it's on the spectrum of just do it. But um, I've always, I, I, I have, um, I mean, right now I have a really good schedule and I, I do work a lot, but writing is pretty much my main time, my full time job. And so that's, uh, say, four to six hours a day of writing. And then I, I do work a lot. But I used to, I used to be, I used to have a less idea schedule. And I used to be, um, I don't know if people know my story, but there was a time where I was like, panics because I was losing all this money so I was emotionally out of it I didn't have any time I was doing all this work I was trying to raise kids and have a family and and just was kind of nuts and I always managed to go to the gym and to run and do other stuff and I kind of looked back on that and I said well how did I have the time for that because I never faltered it never became something where I just didn't have time for it and I think the secret was it was just it was just on my schedule it was it was like an appointment uh, so you know you have a three thousand Per, uh, word per day count that you have bartered with yourself or made a bargain and that's like you're committing to that and the, the, the way I read that question is that it's come hell or high water and that is true of your day job and all that stuff and I think that your appointment at the gym has to be like that now like I said I don't know that that's a very helpful question but that is definitely what worked for me what do you say Raj? That was actually a really good answer. Um, I was I was going to say something very similar to that because, you know, he said he did the challenge back in the day, so already he has, like, a, a frame of reference in terms of success, in terms of, like, what he can accomplish once he puts his mind to it. 
and just on the fitness side. And then he spoke about, like like you just said, he has this goal of 3,000 words a day, and pretty much it's happening on top of his other responsibilities. So he has successes in two areas, both areas that are important to him. Like he wants fitness to be important to him, but right now it's taking a back burner to his writing. So I would say, you know, since he already has that success, he – he has to make it just as port, just as important as his writing is, and or very close. Otherwise, it'll always take back to you. So your tip of scheduling it into his day is perfect because once you have a schedule and it's on the calendar, it's like okay, well, it's on there. I have to do it. It's not like you're gonna shift it and then all of a sudden it's not getting done again. But I I would go even further and say maybe link it to his goal of writing. So I like I know myself if if I'm working out and I'm doing the things that I I feel are important to me, everything else gets better, including my writing and things like that. So maybe he could link instead of, you know, just to get started again, because it sounds like he's frustrated because he's, he's just, he just doesn't know how to even get back into it. So maybe treat his gym time or just general activity time as brainstorming time for his writing, what he wants to write about, how he wants to generate ideas, and use that as a vehicle to get into his writing, because then those two will be linked, and all of a sudden, I'm like okay, well now that I'm back into it, it's becoming easier to link that back to that previous success he had. So I would honestly just book out maybe 10, 15 minutes a day for activity. It could be walking, it could be push-ups. It doesn't matter what it is initially. It's just get going. It doesn't doesn't have to be a full 30, 45 minutes to an hour kind of routine, but just get the gears going again. And as you do, you'll find it easier to find other ways to sneak it into your schedule or plan for it better. I think that Joel talked in a recent episode about the idea of um, he would be he would be scheduled for something like a long run, and then something would happen where he wouldn't be able to do it, and so his tendency would be to to just not do it at all. And he said the answer is to uh, go ahead and commit to doing part of that. And I think that's sort of what you're saying because like my my workouts, I, no matter what I try to do, unless it's like a CrossFit type workout, which is real quick. Like all the ones you've given me, it always takes me at least an hour. Like I try to compress it, and it never works. But like that's a lot of time, you know, getting in the car and driving there and doing a workout. But I think if if I were pressed and I knew for an extended time that I wasn't going to be able to do it and it wasn't a planned break, you know, you could do some push-ups and sit-ups and chin-ups and that sort of thing uh, where you can. I, I another thing that I wanted to um, to to is what you said about tying it to another goal. I think is is really really good. Um, now, I, Roger's tagline is sexification, so that's image-based goals. But I know that there are other goals that people have, and I know that you believe in them as well. But um, maybe an image goal isn't enough. You know, like maybe it, like strictly looking in a mirror for you, maybe that isn't uh, driving enough. I'll, I'll give you one on mine. Is um, I'm diabetic, type one insulin dependent diabetic, and what I discovered really viscerally a few times when I've taken a break is that. Um, I need about 50% more, maybe 30 to 50% more insulin on a daily basis if I go for about a half a week without hitting the gym. And so by the end of a, an extended period, it's much harder to control my blood sugars. Um, things that I eat send me way on different like roller coaster rides. And so I, I, like, I have that feedback, and that's a real health issue for me. But the same thing is going to be happening in anybody. There, you're just not going to be dosing your own insulin. And so... I like the idea of tying it to your your other goals. Um, I sometimes I walk as an idea generator, and like I that's work time. I mean, I I say I need to rough out this thing, so I walk and think. Well, I well I walk. So that's just my thoughts. And and, and it works. It's it because you're you're you have this this reason why you're doing it too. So maybe he he just needs to also think about why he wanted to do it the first time, like what, what drove him, because I will never do insanity, I will never do that, but you know, for people, like once they get to that point, it seems like, uh, you know, in the general population, people when they're ready to get in shape, they either run a marathon, or they get some P90X or insanity type thing, and that's a big step, going from zero to insanity, and you know, there must have been a reason for him to do it and stick with it, so... I, I would recommend that he try and reconnect, and it might not even be the same reason that got him started initially, so really just kind of sit down and figure out what you want and why you want it, and 
just start taking those small steps. Don't over don't think you have to attack it with the same kind of intensity that you did when you first lost all the weight because right. you know it's that's that would be like Rocky, Rocky, uh, with the new Rocky trying to do the same thing as the, the first one's like, ah, you know, times have changed, you know, you need a different approach sometimes too. So what I wanted to talk to to Roger about today is, um, I, I mean, I think of this like the, the I made the title of the episode um, about Ro- the the best sexification tips because that's the what Roger uses, which is, hey, it sold me, uh, but. That's because that's a little bit of a sexier sort of a way of putting the title, which I really think is truly apt, and that's the idea of knowing yourself in your um, in your goals. And, I mean, I've found a ton of little things as I've tweaked and adjusted that, much like uh, Jacob's question, help me and, and only me to do better at, at compliance because I'm knowing myself rather than just following a set pattern. Um, so I thought I'd try to mine from you some little tips that maybe people have run across or how important it is to know what pulls your levers specifically rather than just following a pat schedule. Oh, that's, if, if there's anything that I want people to take away from this, is just that that's the most important thing in the long run because there's, there's tons of diet books out there, there's just tons of guides and everything, but they're all just a way to to get you to follow something. And if it doesn't work, people tend to think that it has something to do with them when really, I mean, it, it, it does have something to do with them in, that, in the sense that it may not be right for them. That approach may not be. And I think all of the, the guys and everything, they, they are, they're well-intentioned, but when people approach them, they, they do so with the mindset that, okay, this is what I need, and once it works, that's all. All I have to do is stick with this forever, and I'll be good. But in, in doing so, they kind of shortcut their own, their own role in the process because it's, it's not meant to just be find this, do this, and you'll have that. It's meant to, you know, you're, you're, it's like a video game. You're an active participant in it, and your experience is what shapes it, which, you know, I, I've come from a gaming background, and that's something that's always been in my mind even when I was initially getting started, especially now as I work with clients. It's that, you know, you have to be your own experiment, and if things don't work, you have to kind of reflect back and go, okay, why didn't it work? Is because this thing that I'm doing is telling me to eat only cookies? Or is it because something that you're running up against some wall that you always have run up against on one level or another? So especially when it comes to diet, and we work together, we talk about this all the time, it's, you know, compliance, that's the main thing above all else. So especially, you know, there's so many dietary rules out there that people – they they almost just put people in a box, and it's like, oh, I can't eat at night. Oh, I shouldn't do that. And then all of a sudden, they're eating at night because they feel like they can't. Like, you tell someone they can't do something, first mm-hmm. thing they want to do is, oh, why? Oh, uh, well, I'm going to do it anyway. And then all of a sudden, it just becomes this, this cycle. But once you tell someone, oh, it's okay, you're like, hmm, the gears start going, and they go, okay, well, then it becomes less of an issue. And I know specifically for myself that I enjoy eating at night just using that as an example, just because I like going to bed full, satisfied, and that helps keep me compliant. And I've noticed this with a lot of my clients as well. You know, they, you know, if they, if that's an issue with them, it may not be nighttime. It might be getting through lunch. So in, instead of putting all these arbitrary rules in place to, to kind of guide them, it, I give them, you know, choices. to say, okay, if you're struggling here, let's go ahead and rearrange things so that we can get around a barrier that you know you're having and once we get over that let's see how things work so let's say if they get really hungry at lunch let's make lunch the biggest meal of the day versus breakfast or dinner and see how that helps them stick with it and once they have that success and they go oh okay all I have to do is you know stick to the general principles but how I arrange things is entirely up to me and my experiences and lifestyle then it becomes a much more enjoyable process I think and that that's really what it's all about so, just as an example uh, of this for, for me, because we have two people here who we can give examples of, me and Roger, and of course your clients, is, um, I, are you still following the intermittent fasting, or do you sort of eat all the time? I, I do it all the time, but I don't follow strict, strict, like, window, like, I don't say I'm eating XYZ, it's like, okay, I wake up, I'll eat when I eat, 
it, it's very loose. Before it used to be strict, mm -hmm. but, but now it's more how I feel, which which I think helps me a lot because I don't do well with very strict guidelines. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly what we're talking about, though. Yep. Not. <laughs> so I, I do. And if, for anybody who doesn't um, know what intermittent, intermittent fasting is, the idea is that there's a time when you eat and there's a time when you don't eat. And the way that mine personally works is I tend, to, on most days, and there is some deviation, I tend to start eating around 6 at dinner time. So I don't eat for the first, you know, 12 hours I'm awake, and then I eat from roughly 6 to, you know, I go to bed, so 11 or something like that. And one of the reason that that works well for me is because uh, I have stronger... I don't want to use willpower because we've sort of maligned that idea a little bit on this podcast, but let's just say it's easy for me to not eat earlier in the day, uh, largely because I'm working. Like, my work schedule is that I get up at 6, I start writing, and I'm go, go, go until around 6. Like, that's my primary work time is those 12 hours, and I take time to hang out with my kids and stuff, but that's when I'm busy. Like, I'm, I'm laying around more. I'm doing less stuff after 6 p.m., and when, personally, when I get kind of bored, that's when I start to notice that I'm hungry. Whereas if I'm going, 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 I don't notice it. So it's really, really easy for me. Because people say, man, I could never do that. Well, it's like, well, this is an added bonus. I don't have to stop to eat. How awesome, you know? Yeah. And so I just kind of drink coffee all day. And intermittent fasting works for me because the other thing is, in addition to that, whatever, you know, right now Raj has got me on a pretty good amount of food finally, right? But for a long time I was on like little amounts of food and 1,200 calories per day of mostly protein feels like nothing if you spread it out, but if you eat it only at dinner and a little after, it suddenly feels like a lot of food. So that's just one example. And that's, that's and, and it's an example that highlights this point perfectly. It's like, you know, you know yourself well enough to, to know where your weakest spots are and, and you build you build your strategy around like protecting that. It's like uh, it's not it's not like that. I was gonna make some reference. I'm like, no, it's not like that at all. <laughs> but it, it just goes to show you that you can play around with the pieces a lot more than you think you do. And once you give yourself permission to do that, it it becomes a lot more. Your successes become a lot more frequent. And you like, okay, it just gives you that sense of you can do this, and you have experiments and, and data to back it up. Now. You know, in terms of intermittent fasting, I have, you know, some clients that have tried it and it just doesn't work for them, and that's perfectly fine for me, um, especially women. Uh, it just, it seems, it seems to be a bit harder for women, and that's, you know, for several reasons. But if that's the case, then it, that's perfectly fine. It's, if they tried, it didn't work, cool, let's figure out something else. And sometimes it just ends up being a smaller window, because honestly, we're all fasting at some point, when we're asleep or something else, but... You you want to just find where you're struggling, and that's what a lot of the guides don't teach people. It's like, as long as you have this, you'll be fine, but you need to realize that you're an active participant in it, and it, it's, it's just the biggest lesson that you can learn in fitness. Like, in terms of training, like, I think when you, you, just, you mentioned it yourself, if you had to cut down the routine, there's always something that you can do. And, you know, if I'm crunched for time, I won't stick to my program that I have, but I'll do maybe two or three exercises and I'll adjust it. And the, the biggest benefit of adjusting the rules so that you win is that you feel confident in what you're doing. So, like, I could have just skipped the workout because I didn't have time, but I did the exercise, I made adjustments. I feel like I win, and that keeps the positive momentum going forward, which is you just want to keep that win train just the wheels keeping going because if you once you lose it, it's like, ah, oh, I got to get back into this groove, and it's just hard no matter who you are. And I think, too, um, I, I mean, I think that this depends a little bit. You have to be a little bit into, you have to enjoy some aspect of working out for this one to work. But there have been many a times, many, many times when I haven't wanted to do a workout or I'm just gassed or something. And so what I'll do is what I consider like a, like a candy workout. You know, that's when you get to do the exercises that are... <laughs> Like, I like, personally, this is different for everybody, like, the where I do a lot of reps, and it kind of makes me feel sick. Like, I'm not always down with that. Uh, so on the days when I'm feeling kind of like I don't want to do that, I will do what I like to do, which is to lift heavy objects for uh, several, you know, just a few repetitions. And I'll do stuff like, like, I like to do Olympic lifting, 
And so if I if I get to do, I'm like, oh, I get to snatch today or something. Like that's kind of fun for me. Now that only works if you kind of like the gym to begin with. But maybe you walk instead of do that gut grinding, you know, metabolic workout or something. I don't know. Yep. <laughs> or reward yourself for like having an emergency reward. Like, okay, I know I'm not filming the gym today, but if I go. I'm gonna watch, you know, <laughs> three hours of my favorite TV show in a row, or some whatever gets you going, because it, it really depends. Like, or just reward yourself with whatever you like that's not something food related, something not something different than the the habit you're trying to build, something outside of it. Dude, or it could be food, man. You, <laughs> Roger's got me so polarized right now that it's twelve, it's seventeen hundred calories of like non carbs, like you know. And then it's 2,700 calories of carbs on the days I get to train. So there have been times when I'm like, oh, man, but if I skip this workout, then I can't have the Chipotle burrito afterwards and stuff, you know? The burrito bomb. It's, just, it's, like, a, it's yeah. like a baby-sized burrito. They don't... They Throw don't the rice around. on that. Use the tortilla. You don't need the bowl. Exactly. <laughs> um, one thing I've noticed, and I, I wonder if you run into this with other clients, is, and, and this is just really, really recently I kind of came to this epiphany, was I try to be really... Uh, as clean as I can within the parameters you give me. Now, um, you've always sort of said, you know, fits the macros. So in other words, if you have the right amount of protein, carbohydrate, and fat, it doesn't matter if it's ice cream to some extent. Um, but that said, I've noticed that I have a tendency on Friday and Saturday nights, those are my kind of periods where I get weak. And I also know that there's a switch in my brain that says, okay, you've, you've went ahead and given yourself permission to have the Admiral's Feast at Red Lobster or something. Or like two, <laughs> you know. So therefore, it's in for a penny, in for a pound, so you come home and then you can eat cookies and stuff. Like, it's really hard for me to flip that switch back. Mm -hmm. So I created kind of a, um, a safety valve treat thing, sort of. Like, it, it's like um, I, I tried to think of other things that I could have that, I, that satisfy the urge for a treat, but that won't do that damage to me as sitting down with a bag of Oreos. So for me, it's if I have a cup of decaf coffee with, like, Bailey's Irish cream in it, that's enough of a treat. And I've started doing that when I record podcasts on Friday during the day because I know that I'm starting to look forward to that Friday night meal. Like, oh man, here it comes. I'm going to annihilate it. <laughs> so I find that if I have a little indulgence early, that it, it, it lets off some of that steam. Does that make any sense? This is what's known as the Hawk principle. You see, you uh, you stop yourself from yeah. hawking out because you know it's it's like... <laughs> And I, I think many of us, I know I do um, as well, and a lot of clients I've worked with as well, like when the weekend comes, it's like, oh, yeah, I've been good during the week. It, it seems like it's a magical mm -hmm. time. It's like, all right, these, these days don't count. They're different. <laughs> right. But, yeah, it, but what you did is important. You recognize that this is a pattern and that you <laughs> – it's not like you every Tuesday you go, oh, man, I'm – like you – before Friday, you go into the week with good intentions, going, "All right, I'm gonna. It's gonna be different this time." But then Friday comes around, you're like, "Oh man, I'm feeling the same way again." And so instead of just letting it happen, you you actively got in the way and said, "Okay, let's try this and see if it works." And it, it it's hard to flip that switch off once you've already gone down the the dark path. Once you once you have some ice cream, it's like, "Well, I've just had some ice cream. Let's go ahead and." you know, keep going. So what you did was smart, and I think it works. It depends on the person. Like, they need to be aware of their trigger foods and, like, foods that will set them off. Like, for instance, pancakes. If I have pancakes of any kind, it's it's over. So I know I'm like, all right, what can I have that's not quite as bad, but will just get, it'll take the edge off. It'll keep the hawk from coming out and just go and eat everything. So everyone has these foods, and you, you find that once you do it, and before you do it, you find it almost impossible. It's like, oh, I, this is just how it is almost. But once you find something, give it a try, and it works, you realize that you don't need as much as you thought you did to take the edge off and keep you on track. It's more of a mental thing. So it's one of those things you just have to build confidence in over time. Like on Friday, instead of for people that struggle with that at the weekend, instead of trying to go the whole weekend and being as good as you were during the week, start out with one day and go, okay. I'm going to have this little treat on Friday. My Friday is going to be great. Saturday, the option of going a little bit overboard as you did previously is okay. But 
you've nailed down at least one day. And then next week, okay, let's try for Friday and Saturday. It's just those small steps instead of trying to bite off the whole weekend at once, which which works, I think. You know, I uh, I texted you, uh, I think it was just yesterday, about my weekend, right? <laughs> so, um, and this is, I would just, th this story, by the way, relates to, to habits. So I would encourage anybody to go back and listen to our episodes on habits with uh, James Clear, and then we did one after that. Because I've just become so aware of how habitual eating is. Like, it, you think it's satisfying one need, the need for sustenance or whatever. Like, I need this chocolate. But really, you're eating for another reason. And the, the, what, the story I was going to tell about the, what I texted Roger was my um, wife and kids were gone. And they're never gone. So when they're gone... For some reason, this is a time when I'm allowed to do everything that I don't normally do. Like, I don't normally get to watch the movies I want to watch because my kids can't watch them and my wife doesn't like that kind of movies. Uh, I get to just sit around and read without feeling like I should be out working in the lawn or something. And uh, eating somehow got bundled into there. And so I used to take it to such extremes. And I would go ahead of time and I'd go, okay, well, what don't I normally get? And stock up the... <laughs> I mean, it would be a special trip. Like, I'd be like, fudge-covered Oreos. All right, let's get that. <laughs> let's do this. You know, let's buy a whole Sara Lee coffee cake. And <laughs> um, and then I would, I mean, I actually literally did this. And, and I'm a pretty healthy guy. Like, I eat pretty well most of the time. I literally put them on my table so that I could make sure I wouldn't miss them. You know, like, okay, well, <laughs> what can I plow? Oh, I can probably plow through the rest of those Nutter Butters today. And, um, I, you know, lo and behold, of course... I, it would make me sick, and, and because I'm diabetic, it would still throw my blood sugar out of whack for 36 hours, and I just, last time I thought, I'm like, am I an idiot? Like, that doesn't make any sense. Why am I doing this? It doesn't feel good, and so this last weekend, I, I did halfway. Like, I did kind of the Hulk decompression thing, and I bought a few things, but I just tried to think about them, and like, okay, so that tasted good. Now, am I going to keep going because there's some left in this bag, knowing I'm going to feel sick? Like, am I going to make that choice to feel sick? Or am I going to stop? And I was able to stop like more often than I ever have before, and it was kind of neat. Doesn't it feel good? It's like uh, it's like the inception principle. You kind of have to kick yourself. You have to be mindful and go, okay. It's exactly what it experience. is, mindfulness. Yeah, because it, it's eat, once you're in it, it's hard to pull yourself out of it. So you have to – the fact that you, you kind of – you saw it beforehand. You say, I'm not buying as much as I normally would. You know, you automatically disrupted the, the, the habit that you usually get into. And then while you're doing, you go, okay, this is how I'm feeling currently. I have enough experience doing this to know that if I go past this threshold, I'm going to feel like crap. And now you you can't say you didn't know. It's not like, a, oh, this just happened. It's like once you thought that and realized it, you knew you'd have to make a decision and go, okay, I'm going to stop here and feel good and take this win, or I'm going to go forward and try it again, expecting something different to happen, even though it's the same scenario that has been going on for months and years, you know. So the fact that you interrupted it is, is huge because now you have that in the back of your mind going that you can do it, and it, it goes from being impossible to just difficult, which is fine because difficult is still doable, and the more experience you get doing that, the, the better you'll feel and be able to do it in the future. So it goes back to just getting those wins however you need to and then keeping them in the back of your mind for when things get tough. So we got about five minutes left. Let's do the speed round here. What's uh, what are some of your best little uh, little tips? That uh, here's sort of what I'm thinking of. Um, I don't know that this is. I've heard that caffeine is a good appetite suppressant, and I happen to like and drink a lot of coffee anyway. So a lot of times, if I'm feeling a little hungry during the day, I will drink a cup of coffee, and that works. So that would be. I don't know if you agree with that tip, but that's sort of what I'm talking about. Yeah, it's uh, okay. So in terms of diets, or just in general. Just, just in general, keeping okay. keeping it real. You're trying to bulk up. You're trying to slim down. You're trying to make yourself exercise. Whatever. All right, keeping it real. Okay, uh, caffeine is definitely an appetite appetite suppressant. So coffee, people love their coffee. If you tell people they can't have coffee, they will. They might kill you. They I might. love my coffee. Exactly. And if I said you can't have it, you would I'd end this call you. immediately. Because no, you're pretty big, me. so. <laughs> you try though. You try real hard. Yeah. So and that goes back to just saying whatever whatever keeps you compliant is a friend of yours. So coffee, it helps you, it, you, you get more benefits versus, you get more benefits out of it than just the appetite suppression. So it would be something that's good for you. You like, I guess you like the taste of it too? It's on the treat spectrum as well. Yep. So you gotta, that's the treat yourself principle. You know, you have to, you don't want to feel like this, what you're doing is, 
you're giving up everything you love. So I'd say my tip would be to instead of feeling like you need a cheat day or cheat meal, I would build things that you love into your diet. So if you like ice cream, find a way to build ice cream into your you know, diet on a regular basis so that you don't feel you need to, to, to binge on it. Because once you restrict something to the point where it becomes uh, like, oh, this is super special, then it's easy to overdo it when you have it. So that would be one tip. Also, if you, if you get hungry, you know, caffeine and things like that work, but also I'd, I'd try other interventions, so moving. Usually if you get up and move, it tends to suppress your appetite a bit. So nothing too aggressive. Uh, sometimes that can really ramp up the appetite. But just going on a walk, uh, talking with a friend, just something to distract yourself from the hunger will I, nine times out of ten make you realize that it's not as bad as you, you think it is. It's just a, a small blip on the radar versus a I'm going to die type of hunger. I could um, be sitting around watching TV feeling really hungry and then go play rock band and it's amazingly an hour later it's I'm not hungry. It's like you were never, yeah, it's like it never even existed yeah. in the first place. You're like, huh. So that's that's a tool. Like if you find yourself hungry and you've just eaten, odds are it's more in your it's more of a craving versus a physical need for food. Because like you were saying before, once your body gets some food, it's like, okay, I can I can calm down. I'm not gonna Nothing bad is going to happen, and then at that point, it's more in your head, and you have some idea of what you want to eat that's really driving your hunger. So that would be uh, my next tip, just have some kind of intervention, whether it be physical activity or just distract laughing. Oh, it's hard to be hungry and laughing, I found. It just, it just rarely happens. Um, and also, uh, I guess my, my final tip would just be to do things you love doing in terms in your exercise routine. So... Don't have don't have, fill it with things that you feel like you have to do all the time. Like I love. Do you curls. remember what I did, dude? You remember my off day? In terms of what with food or exercise? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I saw the video. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and it, it didn't make. You I did happy. Dance Dance Revolution. Oh um, and you you crushed it. I, is, yeah, I did pretty good. See, and it's like, and and that's and it makes you like. How did that make you feel doing that? Like just. Happy? That's awesome. Yeah, that's why I picked it up is it's just a fun... I remember looking at that and saying, boy, that looks fun as hell, and I'll bet it's great exercise. And so there you yeah, go. Yeah, you, you were right on both occasions. So it's it's not it's not all about sticking to the perfect plan. It's the plan that you're going to stick to the most that's going to have the, the best chances of success. So if you hate what you're doing, change it. Any Explore every other option. Find something you like doing and just stick with that. And then... Adjust the variables from there, so get stronger, tweak things like that. But that's a perfect example right there. So I'm glad you brought that up. Excellent. So, all right, Roger, what uh, what's the best way to get a hold of you? RajLawFitness.com. Yes, or Facebook at Facebook.com/slash RajLaw. I'm up there with all sorts of shenanigans usually. All right, and I can vouch uh, for Roger. We've been working together for almost a year now. I think. See, it's, been it's a while. Man, and those those pictures say it all, man. Like every time I see it, I just I want to age backwards too. I gotta figure. I gotta. I gotta do what I have you do. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> all right, awesome. And I am Johnny B. Truant. Uh, thanks for listening to Bigger, Better, Stronger, Faster. Uh, if you enjoy the show, please leave us a review on iTunes. If you have a question, Bigger, Better, Stronger, Faster dot com. You can leave a voicemail and stuff. Thanks for Roger for being with us, and uh, we'll see you on the next one, folks. <laughs>